In the last one, we created our own directive called confirm click. We talked about a lot of things that are related directly to directives, but we didn't really talk about the really the click part of the confirm click, which is actually coming from ng click or Angular's click directive. Now, what this allows us to do is run an expression. Now, we briefly talked about expressions, but we didn't actually do any of these expressions. So in this one, we're actually going to update our code from before using this ng click. But before we even do that, we're going to just make we're going to actually do something ng click and do that. So we saw the scope dot evaluate click action. This is what we actually need to improve. We didn't do it in the last one for a reason, because I want to show you now what we're going to about to do. So on any particular element inside of Angular, you can use something called ng click. So we have confirm click and confirmed click. So this is the actual function of confirm click. But let's go ahead and do ng click now. And I'm going to set it equal to something in a second. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove this other stuff for now. I'm going to leave it in this comment right below. And we will come back to absolutely having that. So we've got this ng click and we can do something here. So we can actually run a method here. So let's just call this go to item. And I'll use parentheses here. So this is actually executing go to item. Now, where is go to item actually defined? Well, this is a function that I'm going to be using every time I do ng click. So if I go to item, I have to actually create this function inside of the actual component that is handling the blog list HTML, which in that case, of course, it's blog list component, right? This is the template. This is where we handle our scope. So I can come in here and do scope dot go to item, set it equal to a function with no parameters at this point, and we can do some stuff. So let's say just console log some item, right? And then I refresh in here and I click on that. And if we inspect the element, we should see some item coming through there or well, misspelled some item, but it does work as far as when we click on it. Now, this is important because we can now do all sorts of things in here. So let's go back into that list and we can actually put the item itself. So item in here, go to item. Now I'm actually going to get rid of this ng href stuff. I'm going to again, comment that out or cut it out and paste it below. And I'll just put href equals to a hashtag. So now it's go to item item. So if I refresh in here, I can click on it and it's console logging stuff, but it's not actually going anywhere because of course there is no link that's associated to it at this point. Now this is something you might end up doing. You might end up doing it a lot. So you actually need to run something for this go to item. You need to be able to handle that go to item method to actually run this sort of link. Because the other part of it is what if you didn't put it in an anchor tag? What if you just put it in a span? and you used a CSS to handle it differently. So if I click on these elements, it's still showing that stuff, right? It's not changing anything. It just, it's no longer an anchor tag. That's the only difference. That's really cool. The other part about this is for some reason, if you wanted to hide the links as to where they're going, this is how you could do it. Notice that the links are not showing up down here. And if you, you know, copy link address and paste it, it goes here. It doesn't actually go to the link. If I click on it, it we want it to go to that link. So let's actually make that function work. So let's go back into our component for this. And you might remember what we did with our actual directive. When we were talking about some stuff, we did this root scope stuff. So I'm actually going to go ahead and copy that whole thing and bring that into our go to item function. And we're going to just, you know, comment it out, do the spacing stuff. And there we go. Um, so I want to make sure that I have these being passed inside of our actual controller method. And that's going to be root scope as well as location. And there we go. So this will actually run this, this go to item thing here, but we, we have something being passed. And in this case, we had the post being passed inside of this function right here. So when I say inside of this function, of course, that means on our HTML element, we have that item here. So this item is the representative item that is being passed inside of this loop, right? So this loop has, we called it item. So if I called it post here, all I'd have to do is change these to post and it would still work. So let's go ahead and save it, refresh, click on it, and we get a little bit of error. So let's go back into our component and 
We've got our blog list component. We've got our root scope here. Let's keep out that root scope for just a second and we'll just do location path. Ah, there's the problem. This right here, scope.post. We don't actually need that. We just need the post ID, which is coming from that post itself. Shouldn't be anything with the root scope. So let's try it again. I click on it and it looks like our root scope is also not wanting to work. So let's just try the location path. And I'm gonna leave this root scope out for a second. We'll refresh, click on it, and now it actually works. It actually takes us to where we want it to go. Okay, cool. So that is showing us how we can make our own functions and using ng click to run an expression. So this right here is an actual expression. It's gonna execute what's ever there. So if it's a function, it's gonna execute that. It's a, if it's an equation, it's gonna execute that, but an equation's not gonna do a whole lot for us. The functions are what's gonna do a whole lot for us. So now that we've talked about this, we can actually improve our confirm click directive. So if we look at this, this out, uh, evaluates the click action. So whatever that click action is, it will evaluate it just like ng click. So it's just, it's exactly the same. So let's go ahead and copy. I'm gonna copy this entire thing again, and I'm gonna bring it in here paste it in. In fact, actually what we'll do is I'm going to copy this. So the code is still on the repository for that part of things. And I'm going to paste the old code back in. So that should work just fine right there. So if I save it, let's go ahead and try it out. I confirm click and hit, are you ready? Okay. So um, let's see, it doesn't seem to be going in the right area. Oh, that's because of post. We changed it to post instead of item. So let's just change those to post again. All right, refresh, click, and there we go. Okay, so now it's working, but it's not It's not actually doing something correct here. In fact, it's gonna be really easy now. We just do go to item, and this is going to be where it goes. So go to item, it's gonna execute that same function that we just did. So if I click on it, it's gonna to go to that item. Now this is true for any actual component. So if we put this in the blog detail view, we have a confirm click or an ng click, we would need to put some sort of actual method or function in here that handles that that click function, right? So that click directive, just like we did with ng click, we would, we would need to do that same sort of thing, uh, which is rather cool. So the other part of this is actually going to where this click, click action is, as opposed to what's listed in our href. So like if I change this to just a hashtag and refresh and click on this, notice it, it, well, it actually shouldn't take me anywhere. Oh wait, no, no, sorry. It definitely should take me somewhere and that's because of our component here. And let's see, if we jump back in here, we have this location right here. So if I change this to being like, you know, some other number and did it now, it's gonna take me to somewhere different, right? Um, but if for some reason this wasn't working and but the component still was, there's one more thing that I actually do want to add because if I click on this and hit cancel, it does cancel. It, it is a little bit better, but there is one more thing that I want to do and that is I want to prevent this event from going through. So event.prevent default. And also right before that, we want to do event.stop immediate propagation. So um, the reason I'm doing these two things is to prevent any other sort of thing that might be happening um, as a result of this actual click event. So now we can just do this and do console log um, canceled. All right, so we refresh and I click on this. And of course, are you ready? It's not going anywhere. That's because of our location path, it doesn't seem like it's working now, right? So that's because of how we created this immediate propagation and prevent default. It's not going through the actual function here. So I'm gonna change this back to what it should be. And then I'm gonna put this root scope back on and run this path one more time, refresh, click on it, say okay, and now it actually takes us. So that is how we use that root scope again. So it has to do with just kind of more or less forcing it to happen. And this right here is uh, ensuring that the click event that is going through is going to prevent other things from happening as well. This is just a more robust 
confirm click than it was before. And now we can actually evaluate any given um, function inside of our actual directives, which is really, really nice. And then inside of your controller is where we actually decide where those things go. Of course, we could decide what happens here if there is no click action. So you can make a decision tree for that in particular, but it's just not something we're gonna do, right? But it is something to think about when it comes to creating your own custom directive. So that's ng click and then improving our own custom directive. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.